You know, Halsey had that new album come out, and I was thinking about something. As a society, why do we still have g Easy around? I, I'm just wondering, because I feel like his entire persona, and it's it's wrapped up in the image, the look. His look literally is like, hey, if you're a woman, I'm going to treat you like shit. <laughs> It's it's just all right there. And then he's also notorious for like cheating and like being very avoidant and just being like a pretty shit partner. But tell me why all his top songs got the bitches on it. You gonna treat the bitches like shit, but you can you ain't make no money without the bristles. His top songs are with Halsey and BB Rexa. And honestly, girl, those are the only like G Easy songs that I know. And I don't know if you guys know this. I'm a BB Rexa warrior. I think she's one of the most talented and undermined people in the industry. And you know, part of it is because BB doesn't act like a diva. She just likes music and she loves what she does and she makes good music. And then like doesn't make a massive deal about it. But then she's got, dude, what does she have? Like 50 million? Okay, no, I think it's like I think she has like 20 million monthly Spotify listeners. Like she. Let me look. 38 million, 38 million monthly listeners on BB Rex. And when we gonna get my girl her flowers? I mean, for real. And then also, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, the song Me, Myself and I, which is g Easy song, which she's not even, oh my God, she's not even like in the title credits for it. You know, she wrote that hook. The only good, Girl, the only good part of Me, Myself, and I by g Easy was originally B.B. Rexa's, and she had presented that as a solo song, and they were like, let's put it on a track with a guy. <laughs> It'll be stronger if we put it on a track with a guy. And then also, let's give him the whole song. <laughs> That's actually what they did. And, they, and like, think about it. Think about the song Me, Myself, and I by g Easy. right? What do you think about? The girl singing, BB Rexa, right? And then, like, what did he comes in like, and then, 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 like, nobody wants to hear that. He sound like every uh, every rapper that I've heard for the last fifteen years on TikTok. That's right, fifteen years on TikTok. <laughs> I, also, um, the Halsey is it Halsey? Is that how you say it, Halsey? Okay, Halsey. I think it is Halsey, you're right. Also, correction, Halsey. Um, she just put out that new album. It was called The Great Impersonator. She wrote it when she was chronically ill. And she also, like, she she kind of has a theme with a couple of her albums. She seems like, like a theme girl, a concept girl. I mean, it makes sense. She was a Tumblr girl, too, right? Um, I listened to a few songs off of the album. And I'm going to be honest. I kind of wanted to not like it. Um, because like, you know, I'm a Bjork fan. I'm a Tori Amos fan. I love my favorite artists are pretty much all female musicians. And what she did in this album, it's called the great impersonator. Each song is kind of a tribute to like a, a female singer. Um, so she did a song in the style of Aaliyah, a song in the style of Tori Amos, a song in the style, you know, you get the point, right? She, did, I, she even did an Amy Lee style song, which is pretty badass. Um, but I went into it. <laughs> Just feeling like it was a little gimmicky. And then also, like, these are some of my favorite female artists. And since she directly said, this track is supposed to be Bjork inspired, it makes us that are, like, fans of that artist kind of look at it a little bit more critically. Like, eh. But you know what? I, I liked some of the, I liked the songs. I, like, I, I will listen to that. I think I might listen to it in full. And I went into it, like, I don't know why. Um, kind of wanting to not like it. I think because one, like the the infamous mall video of her, like I think that just like, and you know what? That's not a reason. It's actually really interesting how much she got bullied for that. Like just for like confidently singing in the mall. Now that I think about it, that's pretty fucked up. Got internet? Guys, we're assholes. I don't, she, she shouldn't have gotten any hate for that. That's kind of weird in retrospect. Let me think, why did... I guess because she was kind of doing the Blink-182 style. But you know what? Some of y'all, and I, I know this is true because like this kind of happens to me too. Some of y'all just get secondhand embarrassment when like anybody sings anything. So even though Halsey is like a professional singer, the fact that she had the confidence to just like start singing in the mall is like, some of you guys will just immediately find that cringe. So maybe that's where that came from. But anyways, um... That was kind of a thing. And then I think I probably was extra critical on it because, like I said, I love a lot of female artists. 
Um, but I liked it. And then I saw that Anthony Fantano guy. He gave it, he rated her album a 1 out of 10. I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> like, in like 1 out of 10? Are you kidding me? Well, wh- what happens if I, if I put a Zoom recorder on the floor and I shit on the carpet? I don't know. You going to rate that 1 out of 10? Is that the same caliber? I mean, really? 1 out of 10? I just think that's like rude, you know, with your power as a music reviewer. But I don't know that much about that guy. I just know he's popular for reviewing music. And I was shocked that he gave the album a one. Like, that's... Hey, bro! That's fucking crazy. Okay, now, speaking of us bullying Halsey for that mall video, when she didn't... I mean, I, I, I'm i not saying, like, I was in the comments typing anything. I just know what the sentiment was. You know what I mean? Um, now, there is... You know what? Let's let's just go straight into bully court, okay? Do they deserve to be bullied? I know. Fuck. I know I'm going to come out of this saying that they don't deserve to be bullied, but we're still going to assess. <laughs> Have you guys seen this band called Lawrence on TikTok? Um, they've been around for a while. They're a brother sister duo and <laughs> they you know they're making they're making Berkeley style music, you know? Like we're all in major chords. Let's try to hit it with a little soul, upbeat. Let's go. What tempo is this? I don't know. It's like that, you know, we got the millennial drums. It's like, dude, if this band was around in the early 2000s, they would have shoved them down our throat like crazy. Now, I can't play you the song, okay? I cannot play you the song because obviously this will just get like copyright or whatever, but bitch, please, please, please go listen to the song. Hold on. What is it called? I'm just going to explain to you why they're getting bullied, but you have to listen to it to get a little context. Okay. So the song is called What You Want by Lawrence. And the reason why they're getting bullied, wait. I don't know if you should go listen to it now and then come back. Yeah, can you go do that? Because I'm like, I want us to be on the same page, but I'm also worried that if I tell you, hey, can you go listen to the song and come back? Like, what if you don't come back? Well, that's just the risk that I'm going to take so that we're on the same page. Because This holiday season is just around the corner. And listen, what do I want to do during the holiday season? Nothing. I'm just kidding. But I do want to spend less and stress less, which HelloFresh makes possible. Dude, listen, HelloFresh has been around for years, and I'm sure some of you guys have tried it or at least considered it before. It's one of the best. Um, I have made HelloFresh meals before that I have made years and years later afterwards. Like, you actually learn the recipes. If you don't know how it works, they basically will send you a box with a few different recipes for the week as well as all of the ingredients, perfectly proportioned. Um, It's so funny. I'm not even reading the information that they sent me. I just actually genuinely like HelloFresh. One of the first times that I ever got it, I made this recipe. It was, I'm wondering if anyone's had this. It's like a chicken and you put sour cream on it and then the breadcrumbs and you bake it. It was so good. It was so, so, so good. I remember they send you like the big sheets with the recipes and I kept those in my kitchen for many years until I just figured out how to make the recipe on my own. Um, It's one of my favorites. So listen, not only are you going to shop less and spend less with HelloFresh, but you're gonna add some new recipes to your arsenal. And if you don't know how to cook, HelloFresh will basically teach you. Also, the meals are easily customizable so you can have them just the way you like them when you put your order in. And the HelloFresh market has over 100 add-on items. I love these. They can be breakfast meals, protein snacks, anything that you want. You can add it onto your order so that you have snacks all through the week while you wait to eat your tasty HelloFresh meal. I mean it. They are tasty. So you can get 10 free meals applied across seven boxes if you use our code FREEIGN. That's HelloFresh.com slash free. IGN. Look, that's 10 HelloFresh meals over the course of seven boxes. Try America's number one meal kit. Okay, we're back. Uh, you only, oh, fuck. I should have told you, you only have to listen to it for like 30 seconds. You don't need to listen to the whole song. <laughs> In the song, the woman is singing um, with what I would describe as an interpretation of soul. 
Um, but it comes off as like it comes off as this like old navy style commercial, and everyone will not stop talking about it. Okay, I'm gonna read you some of the comments. Somebody, uh, Remy Raccoon said, that first part rips, but then everything afterwards sounds like, get this lunch deal for only $4.95. <laughs> Somebody said, unlimited talk, text, and data commercial music. Somebody said, somebody's mom is going to love this song. This song is going to go crazy as a Target ad. Unlimited 5G data anywhere. Okay, okay. You know what? Now that I'm reading this, <laughs> Jesus Christ, somebody else said, Everyone is roasting this song, but ultimately, we need music like this, or else commercials will be silent. <laughs> Y'all about to get the craziest ads for notebooks and pencils next year. <laughs> Someone said this is coworker music. I don't know what they mean by coworker music, but yes, that is correct. Okay, now that I'm reading these comments, I'm reevaluating this. <sighs> Okay, this this could be a hot take. I've been practicing my hot takes here, okay? All right. Um, I feel like, on one hand, I almost want to feel like, oh, I feel bad for them. They're getting bullied over their art. But I think the reason why people are, like, feeling weird about their music is because this doesn't, to me— I'm like, is is this the sound that y'all wanted or was this curated by the, the classical musical training that you went through? Because for me, I love artists that have like a true expression of their soul or their pain or something. But the music that they're making sounds like their band teacher was like, okay, and raise the drums here. And okay, can you, can you try to hit this note and do this? It, it, it sounds very engineered. Um, and then when you think about it, too, I think their dad was in the music industry and they originally were featured in the movie Miss Congeniality because they when they were kids, they like made the little song that Gracie Lou Freebush sings. Why the fuck do I know Sandra Bullock's character name? For that movie? <laughs> Anyways, they wrote that song. OK, not. The badass song that comes on during the Miss Congeniality pageant. You know what I'm talking about? When they had the when they had the um the little Lady Liberty. Who who is that bitch? Hold, nobody tell me. Nobody in the studio tell me. Statue of Liberty. They were dressed like the Statue of Liberty. And then you know it was all blue, and that song came on, and they were like, D -d 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 -d. not that song. They wrote the um little baby song that she sang for like the talent competition or something. But anyways. So they so they do that. By the way, if you keep listening to this podcast, you'll just keep learning random shit that you will have nobody to, sh to share this with. Like, it's, it's just you and me, okay? Um, so I, get, I guess um, I'm flip-flopping on this because, you know, an hour ago I was like, Lauren's getting bullied is kind of funny. And then, you know, I was thinking about it because, you know, Halsey, Hal Halsey, Hal Halsey. Hallie. Halsey getting, you know, roasted for putting out an album that's like actually, you know, pretty good. Um, I feel bad for her. So then I was like, man, do I feel bad for Lawrence? Because people not liking your art or saying that it sounds like a back to school commercial would like, re like really like, I don't know, mess me up a little bit. But you know what? I also looked at some of their, you know what? I looked at some of their other videos. <laughs> Whatever genre of music this is, I fucking hate it. It's not for me. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. I hate it so bad. But also, I don't know if you guys know this. I really dislike ska music, and I also dislike pop punk. I don't like anything that's happy or uplifting. A lot of the themes in pop punk are like, hey, kid, everything's going to be okay. But, you know, I didn't have that sentiment when I was a kid. I wanted to die every day. I was hoping God himself would take me violently in front of my mother. <laughs> so I don't like, I don't like pop punk because I don't like, or anything positive like that because I don't like the notion of everything's going to be okay because it's not, it's never going to be okay. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like all those genres of music, like what Lawrence does, ska and pop punk, they're just like not for me, you know? Um, <laughs> but 
Let's see. What's my closing sentiment on it? That type of music isn't for me. Oh, so I probably shouldn't judge it too hard. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually a pretty big believer that if you're not the demographic, like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not over here giving my opinion on Ryan's toy review, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not the demo. I'll fuck off. I will keep reading the comments because they're funny. Damn, maybe it's not funny that they're getting bullied. Maybe it's just the angle that you guys have decided to take to bully them is too fucking funny. Because editing that song over legitimate Apple commercials is hilarious. Dude, I have so many updates that we're cycling through today because there's just so much going on. Um, I don't I don't really talk a lot about my dating life. If you guys have been following me for a while, like I've been in like a few like long-term relationships and I don't put them out there. I, I like I like to keep my relationship to myself. You know, the, the minute you put it online, you're basically inviting a third party in. Um, and then also, I try not to talk about too much stuff too because even though it is my dating life, it is also the other person's dating life too. Um, I think it's pretty fucking ridiculous when, you know, people like make entire YouTube channels or entire TikToks about going out on dates and then just divulging every single detail of the date when like, you know, it's a, it's a two-way thing, right? Like, would you like it if you went on a date with somebody and somebody just told everything? No. But anyways, I am about to tell you like 15%. Okay. Because this shit's mad fucking funny. So first of all, um, I've been on more dates in the past like two or three months than I think I have in the past five years. It's hilarious. I don't know why people keep going out with me, but I will, I will take it. I'll take it. She's in her confidence era. Let's go. Also, dating is kind of fun. Like I'm having like fun. Like, listen, you guys, bitch, you guys fucking know me. Like I'm like going out on like one, two dates, something like that. And then maybe we never see each other again, but whatever. I'm having a blast out here. So this one happened a while ago. I'm out with somebody and we're out, you know, just, you know, hitting a couple bars. We decide to like do a little mini bar crawl in Hollywood and we end up like sitting next or these two guys come in after us and they they look kind of lost, but they, you know, sit down and, and we start chatting with them. Cause like, you know, if you're at a bar top, like that's what people do. They kind of like mingle with each other. Right. Um, and so they were, they were super nice. And you know, some people just have like good energy and it's easy to strike up a conversation. So, you know, the guy that I'm with, they're, they're me, 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 me. And I'm just kind of like chilling. I'm having a nice time. And, um, at one point, the two guys, they say they're just in town for a convention. I literally cannot believe this happened. And the guy's like, oh, oh. And the two dudes ask my guy what do you do for work? And my guy goes, oh, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a woodworker. I build like custom furniture out of, you know, different materials. Like we use a lot of really expensive materials. We build these um, like conference tables for businesses that cost like tens of thousands of dollars. And the guys are looking at him with their with their mouths kind of open and their eyes are just kind of like, whoa. But it doesn't seem like they're impressed, they, they just seem shocked. And, you know, he continues to explain the details of his expensive woodworking. And I'm thinking like, oh, they're, they're guys, maybe they're like, wow, this is so amazing. And then he asks them, well, what do you guys do? And then one of them says, we're arborists. I did not know what an arborist was at the time. <laughs> and the I have never sensed more si stone cold silence. So you guys also think about this in my little dumb like brain. I'm seeing them shocked. I think what he does is pretty cool. Then they say this French word that I don't fucking know. And now nobody's talking. <laughs> I And I was like, Oh, so you guys are like in town for work? And they were like, yeah, it's an arborist convention. <laughs> now, in retrospect, this is hilarious because if you don't know, an arborist is somebody that studies and saves trees. And this motherfucker is over here finding the most expensive one and cutting it up for somebody's corporate tax break. <laughs> like, they don't need no $50,000 conference table. <laughs> no. So the two arborist guys... The, the the cordialness was done. 
these fools love date trees, okay? They completely cut the conversation out. Like, you know, they already had the tab in front of him. So like he had already just like reached for it. But, you know, they were kind of nice in their sign off. They were like, um, keep in mind, I still don't know what that French word is. And I don't know why everything's shifted, but like, whatever. Like, we don't know them. See ya, bye. Um, so the guy, they're nice. They say, uh, so do you guys know any other bars that we should hit here? And, and you know, my guy's like, oh, so-and-so. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> so they leave and I was like whoa that was weird I was like wait what do they do for work like that had to have some type of connection to it and that's when he told me and I just couldn't fucking believe it dude I couldn't believe it um <laughs> They were out here for a convention to protect and save the trees. Now, I will say one thing that I've actually grown to appreciate are the nature boys. Um, you know what? I could be wrong about Lana Del Rey, okay? I could be wrong about Lana and, and Jeremy. I mean, Lord willing, you know they're going to be divorced in like a year or two, which like— Great headline, right, Lana? Okay, we see what you're doing. Um, that's fucked up with me. Maybe it won't happen. But I, I want to say something that I didn't realize until I, like, met some dudes that like nature shit. Okay, most guys that I've ever dated have either been traumatized or wanted to be famous or some combination of both. So... What they do is they wake up in the morning and they loosely think about how to get famous and then they do some kind of trauma reaction, like doing nothing. I don't know, whatever. Um, but when I when I like met some nature dudes, this is the weirdest shit. These motherfuckers will wake up at like six or seven o'clock in the morning to go do a hobby before they go to work because they like it, which is Mind blowing to me. Like, I, I like, I, okay, this one guy I met, he likes to pick berries. He likes to hunt for berries. He likes to hunt for mushrooms and hunt for berries. Now, I've heard of people that are like shroom hunters, but the fact that this dude just fucking loves berries, I was like, really? I was like, don't they pop up in the same bushes every year? And he's like, well, you know, when the seeds transfer over, the berries could be anywhere. And then sometimes there's hybrids of something. And I'm like, okay, like, whatever. <laughs> Um, but what I really like about it is like these guys, are, they just fucking have hobbies and they love the world and they love getting out there and they love doing stuff. They have like a hobby and a passion, which I am not used to. I am used to dating. Like I'm like, give me the most broken toy in the store and then hit it with a hammer and sell it to me. <laughs> That, I guess that's what, you know, my MO has been for the longest time. But I mean, and then also I say that because you guys fucking know this. I was like a fixer when I was younger, okay? I was picking all the wrong ones because I wanted to be the one that saved them because I thought that that meant that maybe they would never ever leave me. And then also I got probably some kind of ego boost from thinking I was fixing them or some shit like that, which by the way, corny, right? But I was like 20, I figured it out. Also, a lot of people are still doing that. So, you know, we move through it. Um, but. Yeah, people that actually have like passions or like like to do things like it, it's been very like inspiring to me because um, I don't have that. I'm one of those girls that, you know, every couple of months I'm like, I should get a hobby. And I, I know some of y'all are like that, too. Shut the hell up. <laughs> we really be sitting out here realizing we don't have a hobby and then try to get a hobby and then get bored of the hobby and then just move back to like scrolling on our phone or playing video games. Um, I mean, I have some. I like traveling. I just got back from, I just got back from Jackson Hole. I did like some hikes. I did some nature stuff. Little, you know. Um, what else do I like to do? Do y'all know what I like to do? Hold on. I like to travel. I like to cook. I like to make bouquets, which is kind of weird. Oh, I like to make music. Okay, I do. Dude, that's for sure what I do the most. I don't even think, I completely forgot about that. Um, like, dude, I'm such a little crackhead when I'm in my studio. Like, y cause y'all know I have that music studio. Um, I will literally get off of work at like six, seven o'clock and race to the studio at eight o'clock and I will be there until two o'clock in the morning. So wait, I do have a hobby. That's crazy. I got a bill the other day for my meal and it was like $53 or something like that. 
And I strongly considered leaving um, $10.40, right? That'd be 20%, right? That sounds about right. I strongly considered only leaving ten forty. And I was like, I can't do it. I'm a 40 percenter, baby. Give him the 20. I, I I like literally stand by this. Like I'm straight up a 40 percenter. Or like if you've ever waited on me before or you had a friend or something, I will tell you exactly what I did because I do the same exact fucking thing every time. Also, if, if I've ever only tipped somebody 20 percent, I, I don't even tip less than 20 percent. But if I've ever only tipped 20 percent, it maybe just means I had a really big bill or I was like paying for multiple people or something. But like if it's just me or like me and two other people, like, hey, you getting 40 percent, baby. All right. And I'll tell you, look, I'll, I will walk in. I'll tell you exactly what happened. I usually will probably come into a restaurant by myself. I will definitely be wearing a sunglasses and hat, not because I'm like in disguise or something. That's what I look like on the podcast, bitch. Like I'm not doing that to like not be recognized. Who the fuck gonna recognize me, right? I wear it on the pod, you know. So anyways, I literally would come in probably hat and sunglasses. I would sit down by myself either at the bar or at a table. I would order either a Diet Coke or two top shelf cocktails, one appetizer and one entree. And I will never order dessert and then I will order all at once, and then I will leave and leave you either 40% or I'll give you somewhere in cash because I almost always have cash on me, somewhere between like 40 to like $100 in cash. Okay, also fun fact about me. Um, I told you guys this before. I used to live in Vegas. Sometimes I like to go to the casino, play a little roulette with my boys. I like roulette because you can play singles. It's not that expensive. You get a lot of play time with it. But because of that, if I ever go to the casino, this means I'm telling you so much personal shit about me. But like, this is something where like, if you met me in the real world, like you would see this happening or whatever. So usually if I go to the casino and I leave, uh, I <laughs> I say that like I never leave. Um, when I leave, I usually like cash out and I have like a couple 20s or hundreds in my wallet. And what I do is the smart thing to do would be to put those $100 bills back into the bank account, right? But instead, I just never go to the bank. And so I started this habit of keeping like some of this cash in my wallet. Don't don't rob me, fuck off. But um, I always give it out to like servers or another thing that I'll do is like, if I'm like out partying or something like that, I think I've told you guys this before. It's happened several times. If I see somebody having a really bad night, I'll just give them a hundred dollars. It's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, I, I do pretty well for myself right now. And I know how much like that would impact me. So like, you, you know, I just be doing that. But, um, so I also, I was a server for many years. I'm 32 now, and I don't think I've waited tables since I was like, maybe 24? 24, yeah, like it hasn't been that long, like eight years, almost 10 years. But you guys know, if you used to be a server or if you've ever worked for tips, like you probably tip pretty well because you know how it feels getting that credit card receipt and seeing that somebody left like an extra 10 or 20 on top, like above you know, what 20% on their bill was. And like, bro, it makes people's day. It really genuinely makes people's day. Um, like I noticed when I was a server, if, if somebody tipped like 10 or 20% or something, I was like, oh, okay, this is good. But you know, if they like went above and beyond and like, you know, maybe their bill was like 15 bucks and they left like a five or a seven or something, like that shit sticks with you, you know? Um, so I... Yeah, I always tip a lot, but I've been thinking lately, like, because I'm always going out, I'm like, damn, am I like, am I tipping too much? You know, I, I, I'd be curious. I might try to add up in one week, like what I tip people. It's a weird, it's a weird thing to try to assess because like, as I get older and I'm trying to be like more financially savvy, I'm like, damn, bitch, you're literally just like, giving out like a couple hundred dollars like a month or like a, every few weeks maybe even um, because I used to be a server and I want to give it back. I don't know. So like part of me is like, be financially responsible, tip 20%. That is acceptable. But then part of me is like, damn, bro, I could do this for the next 40 years. I could do it. Giving back to my people. That's the thing. Like, People that work for tips like that, those, like those are those are your fucking people, man. Um, but 
yeah, I don't know. And then also, I just, I, I also think that it, I know that I'm such a funny character at a restaurant because, like I said, I, bro, you know what I, I just realized this. Okay, if you worked at a restaurant before, only people that worked at a restaurant will understand this. There's a guy that comes in <laughs> like once a week or so. And he might be a local drug dealer. He always comes in by himself. He's always got a hat or sunglasses on. He gets his 10 wings and like one or two drinks and he tips you good and then he leaves. Girl, that's me. That is me. That's me. Holy shit. I finally became the man that I wanted to be. That, that entity of a man, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, that's my role model. That's my father figure. <laughs> the shady possible local drug dealer that just tips well and eats his food and leaves. That's me. Oh, never mind. I'm not cutting this off. I just want to be that forever. That's exactly what I want to be. <laughs> um... Also, I, I don't knock you or judge you if you, even as a person that used to serve, if like you own, if you don't tip or you tip 5% or you tip 10%, listen, I'm trying to pick up the slack for the both of us. But at the same time, sometimes you just don't, you just don't have it. You know, I, I know that a lot of times the way that people tip, it's actually not based on the service all the time. It, it's really based on what people have that day and how they're feeling. And really, not even that much of the service or how they're feeling, it's what you fucking got that day, you know? And I don't wanna hear nothing about like, oh, well, if you don't, if you don't have the money to tip, like don't go out to eat. I, I, I really, I don't agree with that. Like, sure, I do think you should tip. I would love for you to tip. As a former server, I would love for you to tip. But like, you know, if you can only leave like two bucks, but you really wanna take yourself out because yo, isn't it nice when you can like go out to eat at a restaurant, get like a pick your favorite thing off the menu, have somebody take care of you because you're probably always fucking taking care of yourself and everybody else, right? You got somebody, what drink do you want? Oh, let me clean this up for you. Oh, let me take the, you know, like sometimes people want to go out to eat. And if you only got $2 to tip, fuck it. Like that's totally fine. I ain't mad at you, you know? But I really think if you've ever worked for tips or if you actually have the cash, like, if you have it, please leave your people 20%. And if the service was really good, shit, leave them 30. Well, anyways, I mean, look, that's the week. Um, do I have anything fun coming up? No. I don't. No, I, listen, I'm just here the next couple of weeks. I'm working. We got IGN. We got Sinisters. We got live streams. We got body cams. The fun just doesn't stop for you or for me. Um, I'm lucky, dude. Bro, I I get exhausted sometimes doing all the shows that we do. Like I feel like we space them out pretty well. But um, it's kind of a lot, right? I am so happy, bitch. I'm so happy and I'm so lucky that I've picked topics or things that I'm genuinely interested in. Like I you guys know, I'm a fiend for like like, you know, human characteristics and like interpersonal dynamics and like all of that. And so like everything I do is like somewhere in that vein and it's not going anywhere. But I cannot fucking imagine if like, can you imagine if you were like a huge Minecrafter and you made all this money doing it, but then after three or four years you were over it, but you have to keep playing Minecraft because it makes all the money. And now you have to pretend to enjoy it because that's why people watch you in the first place. And now you have to keep playing Minecraft every fucking day so that you can survive and feed your family. Like, I can't, I feel like that probably happens to like a lot of YouTubers that keep doing, I don't know. Um, God, I'm super judgmental today. I'm so sorry. I think I, you know, it's interesting too because I noticed I was beating myself up a lot yesterday too. So I feel like I'm just extra judgmental of myself and other things today. I wonder, I wonder if something's going on. Wait. My period starts in two days. Okay, that's why I'm being a bitch. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you next week.